Hey guys, it's Joey, and this is the video diary, video log for the last week now experiences with the Oakham Hawthorne or who are. And the little black tile is in use for some spell work, so we've got a sort of impromptu setup <laughs> um, of the crystals that came to me this week, the candles that came to me this week, the candle I made this week and the ogham itself so now we'll touch quickly on the meanings again but that we went over them in in detail challenges obstacles obstructing a goal complications concerning love and the overcoming of that as well as fey connections so let's start with a few quotes we'll just let go let go of how you thought your life should be and embrace the life that is trying to walk its way into your consciousness. Caroline Nice. You either walk inside your story and own it, or you stand outside your story and hustle for your worthiness. Bren Brown. So I wrote these two quotes at the start of the week because I quite frequently write quotes down when they speak to me in a certain way, particularly to do with the yoga. And these two were very immediate and it's about embracing your life as it is and accepting who you are, not who you thought you were going to be. And that's a huge challenge for me in my lifetime. It's a challenge for me now, it was a challenge for me f for, you know, for a long time and it will probably continue to challenge me going forward. So then we'll carry on with the, the journal. So last night I lit a candle because I felt quite low and I sang to Brigitte and Morrigan. I had a strong visualisation of being in a circle of snowdrops with feathers, crow feathers, all around. It was raining and the drops fell on my face. That was before in bulk. Some of this is personal, so I won't be sharing that. I'm not going to apologise for the years I've spent rebuilding my life. I don't know... Um, I don't know if that was why, but it made me feel sick and cold at the thought of it. Um, I did have a sort of difficulty at the beginning of the week where somebody whom I have a friendship sort of got annoyed with me and, and said things about the way my life is and I feel bad enough about my life without anybody's help because I have unfortunately my mother's voice in my head that I am constantly trying to reprogram if you like telling me you know this isn't good enough, this isn't a good enough life, this isn't how it should have been, it should have uh, been, in a, been a top lawyer or something by now and you know, rather than seeking out a path that's true to me and surviving what I have survived and I defended that this week because this is my life and I'm not going to apologise for the way it is. So then I wrote some more about the actual Hawthorne and I think I mentioned it in the beginning connecting videos but I'm going to mention them again because I think it's really worth it. A Hawthorne's most striking features beyond its thorns are its snow white flowers and red berries. Red and white are colours of the Celtic underworld and mark it as a fairer tree. Hawthorne tells us that you must bow to necessity and accept the territory in which you find yourself very poignant given what I've just said. However, to keep your goals in mind and do not be dissuaded or disheartened. There are many more positive aspects of this ogham. They flower in May in the Northern Hemisphere. That signals that the time has come to celebrate the rising sap of sexuality that blossoms in the greenwood. Hawthorne has a long-standing association with fertility ceremonies including maypole dancing. A garland of its leaves is often placed atop the maypole. 
Then there was a section that I was reading where they were suggesting that because it had been a, sort of a sexual f tree that was often connected with feminine sexuality in particular, that certain Christian monk type teachings then sort of perverted its message and, and made it more negative. I didn't write all of that down because I, I couldn't find sort of evidence to back that up, but that was mentioned in the writing. Hawthorne has long been used to guard and protect burial mounds, dwelling of the sea. Uh, fay, fay. The Hawthorne on Worial Hill at Glastonbury is a famous example. I cannot help but feel slightly disappointed at some of the relatively negative portrayals of Hawthorne. It makes me think of interpretations of the Morrigan herself where she is demonised and stereotyped by those afraid of feminine power and sexuality. Given my Morrigan wand is Hawthorne and that branch not only appeared at my doorway but in the centre of my room last week to protect me, I cannot help but favour it. That wand, <laughs> it likes to go for walks. Uh, it was across my doorway as a gift when I first found it and last week it was across my doorway and I have no idea how it got there. It, it kind of creeped me out. It's one of those experiences where I, you know, it's a physical experience. It's a bit creepy and it's like, oh! <laughs> but it's hugely protective against psychic attack to have Hawthorne across your doorway. So there you go. There were several beautiful signs leading up to Imbol. Imbolg. Imbolg. <sighs> drop the B, drop the B, drop the B. <laughs> a rainbow through clouds. Oh, it's absolutely incredible, a rainbow through clouds. I've never actually seen a rainbow that, like, into inter sort of cut with the clouds before. A light scatter of rain after I thought it would be better if we'd had some. Crows flying in huge groups overhead and the weird mixture of weather, rain and sun, light and dark, mash of clouds. It was beautiful. And then for Imolg, uh, went to a farmhouse and dairy cafe for breakfast. Uh, there were pictures of sheep on the walls. Sheeps, 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 sheeps. <laughs> Old, oldie, tiny farmer equipment, including a scythe. Goats in the fields. <clears throat> uh, I got some crystals there too. Uh, there are some negative aspects, but it's it's not worth dwelling on. My Imolg ritual was incredible. I could feel the warm power of the goddess flowing through me, and I had a visualization of Brigid and Morgan talking like family. Brigid was saying the Morrigan should ease up a little bit. She sometimes pushed me too hard. Morrigan saying I only ask it, ask it of those that can handle it right, Joe, and I said I could. And the Morrigan got overprotective and Brigitte said I could call on her when I was upset and lonely. Morrigan saying she was there too and was my mother, to which Brigitte replied she was my sister as well. Morrigan agreed to this. I saw the ring of snowdrops and crow feathers again and Brigitte covered me in a long white feather cloak and Morrigan placed one of the feathers atop it. And then the day after, I like this quote, never let anyone make you manageable, remain untamed, Cyrus. As well as, the magic works through you, not beside you, not around you, not for you, through you. Choose your stage, do your dance, stake your claim. The universe I think that one was for. And then this one by Harold Whitman. Don't ask yourself what the world needs, ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go do that, because the world, what the world needs is people who who have come alive. More difficulties, more um, arguments, which hurt me, and I barely slept. And the cards, I read cards in, about the situation, and they said to keep myself balanced and avoid worst case scenarios. <coughs> uh, And then me sort of discussing about how I feel about having um, a job outside of the, the usual realms of being. 
I have been broken, I have fallen down over and over again, I have failed, I have made miserable mistakes and likely I will do again, but I will not apologise for any of my scars for I have always risen again and been stronger for it. That's my own quote, 2004. Maybe you have to know the darkness before you can appreciate the light. Um, was shared on Facebook, to which I responded, maybe you have to be weak before you can be strong. <coughs> then we have the Invocation to Brigitte, which is a separate video, as well as the Purification Spell, which is in a separate video. Oh, this, and then the end of the week, this, this was slightly disturbing, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I went to the village over and saw some rather ominous signs. A dead badger by the side of the road, a tree cleaved in two, presumably by the, the winds or perhaps lightning, and lots of flooded fields. I began to feel a little bit like I was wondering if I had, I had displeased the goddess or if I was doing something wrong and I couldn't see any crows, which I usually do when we go to the neighbouring village. And then I looked into a field which was muddy and it was dark mud and I realised there were hundreds of crows. It's just you could barely see them all. They were all on the ground in this, this, this muddy field and, and you could barely see them. And there was definitely a message there, like they are still there, it's just perhaps your perception is what needs to shift. And that's possibly about the, the other signs as well. We're going to touch on the badgers again in a minute. Whilst in the neighbouring town I got three types of crystal, banded onyx, which for, I had gone there for. I had gone there for onyx. I didn't know it was going to be banded, but I'd gone there thinking I need onyx um, for this ogham in particular. Which is for grounding, healing and balancing. Excellent for releasing negative emotions such as sorrow or grief. Protective defensive magic, reinforce the knowledge that death isn't final. Aids in spirit work, builds up energy after hard times. And the banded onyx is so those two. And then tremolite, which is this one, this one and the one up top, which you possibly can't see. Um, high vibration crystal that resonates with a power energy to help you open new pathways to the brain. It helps you let go of stress and anxiety and releases negative emotions helps alleviate depression and helps you let go of those things that are holding you back from your highest good. I also picked up two spell candles in a lovely lilac-y grey colour which are in shop. This is for feminine, romantic, springtime or star, I love humanity, spirituality, magic, ritual, creativity, inspiration, etc, etc, etc. Uh, live your life, take chances, be crazy, don't wait, because right now is the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you'll ever be again. And yes, I've made mistakes, life didn't come with instructions. Were two quotes that followed that. And then the, then, um, the day after, I saw two more dead badgers at the side of the road in, in a different direction, going into the city, complete opposite direction. I was slightly horrified by it, so I, I sort of did some research into what seeing dead animals could mean. Temporary totem or animal messenger. When the animal serves the role of delivering a message. When an animal dead or living catches your attention in some way, often it holds some deeper meaning. Perhaps there is some aspect of your life that needs to die out. Consider the message of the death tarot card change, ends of a cycle and transformation, and then taking on badger symbolism, stopping at nothing to get what it wants, persistence in, in pursuit, fiercely independent, can be aggressive when threatened. The message therefore seems to be warning against over persistence and over aggressive behaviour in the pursuit of goals. I doubt it's warning against independence in itself, perhaps being too aggressive in the pursuit of said independence. There have been messages all week about remembering to trust the universe and believing in hope that dreams will come to fruition, they will happen. But perhaps pushing for answers right now in a sort of aggressive chase is perhaps 
a destructive behaviour to myself and others and the message therefore being just believe and remember to hope. Couple, um, by going into nature we become forever a part of it, John Steinbeck. And then I, my concluding thought was don't listen to anyone who tells you you are not good enough. I know it's hard, it plagues me every day of my life, but just because you dare to walk your own path doesn't make you wrong. There is the spell for the overcoming a hurt heart, which I've shared separately. And then there is the poem, and we will finish up with the poem for Hua, which is mine. I wrote it's my intellectual property, or it's reserved. I am Hua, I am the change, the obstacle to rearrange. Place your feet firm on the ground, from seed and leaf to fairy mound. I am the bud, the flower of May, the urge to go, or the will to stay. So that is my week with Hua and it fell across Im Imolg <laughs> and there are hints of spring in every element of this week. Imolg is considered as the fore forebringer, the, the, you know, the the harbinger, the, the announcement of the coming of spring, uh, the break through the snow, the break through the ice, the first glimmer of hope. The lilac candles are to do with Ostara and, and spring time, so I was obviously drawn to them because of the messages. There has been some interesting warnings of you know not engaging in aggressive behavior and I absolutely hear what was being said and I was like right <laughs> this is not the time to over push and remember the hope aspect and that has it again flowed through this ogham flowed through this week that you are not alone the goddesses are watching they are listening they are here for you that spring is coming, you know, the difficulties that you have go gone through are passing and you are moving on to, to a lighter and better time. So that's it for this week's Ogham. I meant to put this out yesterday, so it's a day late, apologies for that, but we will get on to the next one. Many blessings.